5. The words of Michael 4 Q 529. This text, which could also be referred to as the vision of Michael, clearly belongs to the literature of heavenly ascents and visionary recitals just discussed regarding the birth of Noah and alluded to by no less an authority than Paul. Such recitals are also common in the literature relating to Enoch and Revelations. They are part and parcel of the ecstatic and visionary tendencies in the Qumran corpus that succeeding visionaries are clearly indebted to, including those going underground and re-emerging in the Kabbalistic wisdom of the Middle Ages and beyond. In our discussion of the Mystery of Existence text in Chapter 7 we highlight some of these correspondences to the work of a writer like Solomon ibn Gabirol in the 11th century ad. This genre can be seen as having one of its earliest exemplars here. The reference to the angel Gabriel in line 4 is of particular importance and follows that of one of the first such visionary recitals, Daniel, a book of the utmost importance for Qumran visionaries and in the Qumran apocalyptic scheme generally. Daniel, too, is a work integrally tied to the Maccabean uprising, as are, at least in spirit, many of the Qumran documents. As in Dan. 8.16 Gabriel is here the interpreter of the vision or, if one prefers, the heavenly or mystic guide though by the end of the vision as extent in this fragment, it is no longer clear whether Michael or Gabriel is having the vision. In the Islamic tradition, a later adumbration clearly owing much to the tradition we see developing here, Gabriel serves as the revealing or dictating angel coextensive with what in Christian tradition might otherwise be called the Holy Spirit. Here. Whatever else one might say of him, Gabriel is the guide in the highest heaven, traditions about Muhammad too are not immune from such heavenly ascents, not unlike the role, Dante ascribes to Virgil and finally Beatrice in his rendition of a similar ecstatic ascent and vision. Here the archangel Michael ascends to the highest heaven. Some practitioners of this kind of mystic journeying speak of three layers again see Paul in two core. 12 2 some of seven, and some of twelve. He then appears to descend to tell the ordinary angels what he has seen, though, as we have noted, how his role differs from Gabriel's is difficult to understand in the text as presently extant. While in heaven Michael beholds the glory of God, literally greatness in Aramaic. Ezekiel, a prophet of the utmost importance in Qumran tradition, not only for works of this kind, but also for the notion of the sons of Zadok terminology generally, is one of the first to have had such visions relating to the divine glory. The terminology is also important in the New Testament and fairly widespread at Qumran. Most of the vision is incomprehensible, but one idea, which reappears in Paul and Kabbalistic tradition generally, is found here that of the new or heavenly Jerusalem, that is while in heaven Michael learns of a city to be built. This apocalyptic and visionary genre clearly owes much to imagery in Daniel and is reiterated in the pseudo-Daniel works in chapter 2. But the actual themes of heavenly ascents and a heavenly Jerusalem again go all the way back to Ezekiel's visions. Not only is Ezekiel picked up by an angel like Holy Spirit and deposited in Jerusalem as part of his ecstatic visionary experience early in that book Ezek. 8.3 but at the end of the book ascribed to him, he is picked up again and proceeds to measure out a new temple 4048. This theme is the crux of the next work, which was either directly ascribed to Ezekiel or operated as part of a pseudo-Ezekiel genre. Translation, 1 The words of the book that Michael spoke to the angels of God after he had ascended to the highest heaven. 2 He said I found troops of fire there. 3 Behold, there were nine mountains, two to the east t and two to the north and two to the west and two four to the south. There I beheld Gabriel the angel, I said to him, five apostrophe, and you rendered the vision comprehensible. Then he said to me, six it is written in my book that the great one, the eternal Lord, seven the sons of Ham to the sons of Shem. Now behold, the great one, the eternal Lord, eight when, tears from, nine now behold a city will be built for the name of the Great One, the Eternal Lord, and no ten evil shall be committed in the presence of the Great One, the Eternal Lord, eleven then the Great One, the Eternal Lord, will remember his creation for the purpose of good, 
blessing and honor and praise 12 be to the Great One, the Eternal Lord. To Him belongs mercy and to Him belongs, 13 in distant territories there will be a man, 14 he is, and he will say to him, Behold this, 15 to me silver and gold, 